to thank you. Yeah, Robert, bring us back tonight. Thank you, son. I appreciate that. We're going to be back in a little bit of Joel tonight. A little bit of Joel. Did you pray for the girls? They're going to come sing for us. They will try to bring to you the message tonight.
tell you, I just want to do more for you. Amen. Just want to be found faithful. And uh, pray the Lord to help us. If you'll remember, that kind of happened to us Wednesday night. Amen. We got down there talking about hell and large. And he said, Lord, that you and I can be the reason for it. Just simply not being the soul winner. And Lord God took us in the human direction there Wednesday night. And we still haven't finished that up yet. And uh, we'll try to get back over there next, uh, this coming Wednesday night. And I do appreciate the Lord. So thank you to be here on the second of January, the first Sunday night in the new year. I pray God will speak to us once again uh, through His precious words tonight. If we're standing with you in reverence to the reading of the Word of God. I have to tell us in verse 11 of Joel, uh, chapter number 2 tonight. And the Lord shall utter His voice before His armor, for His camp is very great. For He is strong that executed His word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even unto me all your hearts. <coughs> And with fasting and with weeping and with mourning, and bring your heart and not your garments. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is a gracious and merciful, for he is graceful, and gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth that he will return and repent, leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering, and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify fast, call a solemn assembly. Look at your will down in verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. We have given you the former rain uh, moderately. He will cause it to, uh, to come down for you to the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. The floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, the palm worm, my, uh, my great army, which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. My people shall never be ashamed. Ye shall, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and, the, and none else. My people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass. Afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall bring dreams, and your young men shall see vision. Also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, and in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood be before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the, in, in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Brother Mike Shores, would you pray for us
uh, whenever they come through. The Bible even goes on to say, if you read uh, these three chapters here, uh, what the Bible says is that before being on high, it looked at the Garden of Eden. What that means tonight is that it was beautiful, and it was plenteous, and it was multiplying. I mean, everything they needed was there in the land. But because of the continual sin of the people, the Lord sent these worms to these locusts through. And, and what happened is, is the Bible is comparing it to the great day of judgment and the day of the, the, the time of the millennial reign and the tribulation when God's people will not be here. You may be saying that right there. And uh, the Bible, believe it or not, compares uh, and scholars have compared. And if you're going to look up the definition of it, they have compared those locusts uh, uh, to those horses and the horse riders uh, uh, that will come in the last days. And uh, the head of that locust shaven uh, uh, lie uh, under a horse. I don't know about you tonight. Uh, the one thing I do know about a locust is they're very ugly. And the other thing I know about them, they make a whole lot of racket. And what, the, 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 what the scholars say is that noise of those, uh, of those locusts coming in and the swarms that they come in. And what the Bible's talking about here in the Old Testament. Now, don't fall out with it right here. You can study it out and look at it. But the reason that the day began to be dark and, and the sun began to be darkened was because of the multitudes and of the swarms of those locusts and, and those insects. They were coming in such a great a swarm. They were making a cloud in the sky. And it was darkening the face of the earth uh, uh, here in the place of judgment. And so what happened was is uh, these swarms came in. And I mean, the Bible said everything on the tree, every bud, uh, they took it off. Everything that was left on the ground after that, the <laughs> locust and the, uh, the canker worm and the, what was the pond worm came through, that the caterpillar came through and cleaned up what was on the ground. I mean, they left nothing at, uh, for the children of Israel. Everything they had to eat and everything they had to, uh, to punish them was now gone because uh, of the judgment hand of God. And uh, I told you again that uh, the scholars say this took place over around 800 years or so, a little uh, more, more than that, less than 900 years before uh, uh, the coming of Christ. So what we see now and what we have here is uh, that continually from the, from the book of Genesis uh, that after man began to have his own desire and his own fleshly want, that man began to sin. And we find out not only that, but we find that uh, somewhere there had to be uh, a sacrifice for that sin. We find in the book of Genesis that Adam and Eve covered it with big leaves. And we find that we're living in a day today. And uh, if there's ever been a time, it's the day that we're living in now, uh, that man wants to cover sin. And there's not really a desire to remove it, not really a desire to get rid of it, but a desire to cover uh, sin tonight. Uh, if you'll notice this, uh, I think it's so amazing that uh, when we're in our outer mind or in our uh, wrong mind tonight, uh, it causes us to take our clothes off. You'll go back and read about the drunkenness that people was under. What happened to one of the greatest sins that happened? Happened uh, after one of the greatest miracles and the greatest cleansing uh, that the Lord ever done. I guess I should call it a miracle uh, uh, because it was before the time we saw Christ uh, performing miracles. But to know that the Lord had uh, spared Noah and his family uh, and, and, and cleansed the whole earth. Uh, but after that, the Bible said that Noah, when he made himself drunk of the vineyards that he had planted, uh, and they began to multiply. And Noah made himself drunk, uh, found himself naked, the Bible said, one of his sons. Uh, the uncovered him and knew what had happened. Uh, and sin once again came because of drunkenness. Now, when you get into the book of Joel here, believe it or not, the Bible is dealing with sin. But if you went home and read any of this tonight, or you studied any of it today, or if you've ever studied the book of Joel, if might have studied tonight, can anybody tell me the main sin that the book of Joel is dealing with? It's the sin of drunkenness. It's the sin of alcohol. And the reason that he's doing that is because that man continually sinned against God. Can I say we're living in a day and hour today that notice this. They may be sins today that we still stand back and we look at and we say that is sin. But if we'd be honest tonight, there is a sin of alcohol and there's a sin of drunkenness. Right. That if we'd be honest tonight, watch this. It's gripped into the hands of our leaders. Right. It's gripped into the hand of our government. Matter of fact, if we'd be honest tonight, it's gripped into the hand of religion. Right. 
This man says it's all right. That priest says it's all right. That church says it's all right. Those deacons over there do it. That man says he's a man of God. He makes it's all right. And before we know it, there's this great sin that if I can't do anything else, I can drink, I can get drunk. And my friends and I, I'm glad in the eyes of God that sin, no matter how big, how small, is still sin in the eyes of God. Or tonight. And so we know that because of sin, the camp is destroyed. But because of righteousness, the camp is blessed. I just want to ask you tonight, which side of the spectrum do you want to live on? You want to live on the spectrum of God's blessing, on the spectrum of the judgment of the wrath of God. Notice I give you four things this morning. I think I only preached two of them. Mentioned the third one in closing this morning. I want to go back to verse number 12. Try my best uh, to finish here tonight. The Bible said, Therefore also now, said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, not your garments. We talked this morning about turning even, uh, even to me with all your heart. We talked about the heart this morning. We talked about it with fasting, getting a burden, I mean, missing a meal, uh, missing, missing uh, uh, something that we enjoy uh, to get a hold of the horns of the altar. Then we talked about weeping there just in closing this morning that a uh, crying can come because it, what is affected by his eye, his eye has affected his heart, and uh, one can mash a finger, one can get the feelings hurt, and uh, cause tears, but that weeping tonight, uh, that is an unbearable sorrow, uh, uh, something with a heavy burden uh, or a heavy load. And I asked the question right before the invitation, uh, uh, when's the last time that we put that burden on us uh, for some old soul or for our church uh, that we truly will, like the weeping will, uh, with it being hung over because of the weight of what is on it. But tonight I'm going to give you something I feel like is very important. The Bible says this, and with mourning. You know what that means this, uh, tonight? Uh, whenever, whenever you think about that mourning, uh, what that means this, uh, tonight is uh, that there is a period of, uh, of deep and heavy uh, sorrow or sadness. You realize tonight that the children of Israel can never get past the judgment hand of God until they get sorry for the shape that they're in. You realize you and I never got born again saved by the grace of God. Hey, we didn't get that way because we're sorry. We we're good for nothing. Low down didn't want to work. That ain't why we got that way, but we got that way. Because we got sick and tired of living in our own sorrowful, pitiful lifestyle and realize that the Lord has something great to offer. You go back to the book of Luke, that prodigal son, you know what happened? He said, I'll rise and I'll go to my father. And I said, Father, I've sinned against heaven in thy sight. No more worthy to be called thy son. Maybe it's one of my hearts. Uh, there's one thing I want you to see tonight. Boy, this will, this will sure put some lips. Uh, boy, the, I mean, those that have got mad and their pride has kept them where their anger left them tonight. Boy, this way here, tire up their tender back. I want you to notice something. That father planned on that boy coming home. Uh, I believe he prayed for him. Uh, I believe he planned on it. But my friend, he prepared for it. There's a there's a new parachute. There's a mess road. There's a ring. My friend, whenever his boy come home, they didn't say what cow. They didn't say what road. I believe every morning. Oh, y'all want to help me right here. I believe every morning he got them service together. He said, Pete Fetching, today could be the day. Somebody polish them shoes up. Somebody make sure that road's still clean, ready to put on. Somebody make sure that ring ain't got no spots on it. Today could be the day. Notice this. Now this ain't just saying we'll not pray for it. Here's what it is saying. That father didn't go drag that boy out of the hog field. Them servants didn't go down there to the hog field and say, what in the world are you doing down here? Embarrassed in the name of your father. Won't you come on back home with us? I said he came to himself. Amen. You know why it's real hard for people to get in and stay in? They never came to themselves. They got in because we got in. They came because we wanted to come. They started dressing like the dress because they thought that's what I wanted. I've been told that that's what I wanted to do. They came to church because I wanted to. Of course I want you to come. But if it's going to make a difference in, the, in your life and in your home, it's not because that's what you want. Yeah. And it's not because you're doing it because you know that's what God wants. And it's got to be you're doing it because you want God to be pleased and God to be honored. And God to be lifted. Can I be real honest with you tonight? That's a silly question. That's right. 
my portion tonight. Is the ringing of the heart. You see tonight now, we noticed that we covered the, we covered the turning your heart, all your heart. We covered the fast. We covered the weeping. We covered the mourning. Now we see it in your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent? And leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Here's what it says in verse number 15. Pay close attention. Here's where the goodness starts right here. He said, Oh, the trumpet in Zion, sanctify fast, call a solemn assembly. Yeah. Now, what that means tonight is simply this. And whenever you go back <coughs> and you study the Old Testament, you look at the wars and that took place. There's only a few things that the trumpet. Can stand for tonight. Number one tonight, or having one do ABCD or one, two, three, or don't matter to me, I don't care. That trumpet was blown for an attention call. That's what the trumpet was blown for. The trumpet was blown that there's the attention that needs to be given. Also, that trumpet was blown for assembly, not only for attention, but for assembly. Now, when that trumpet was blown for assembly, here's what happened. We're getting ready to move camp. So here's what happened. Whenever that trumpet blew the first time, what happened was, is that the tabernacle was taken back. They get ready to move. But then we know that on the camp of Israel, there's 12 tribes and children of Israel. You know what happened to divide it out tonight? There's three tribes on each side of the camp of Israel, north, south, east, and west. There's 12 tribes, three tribes on each side. So what happened is, in, in time to move and time to go, that it's estimated that almost every single time that the camp of Israel moved, that the trumpet blows somewhere near seven times. God's complete number. Now, one place you don't want to be, if you've ever been on a cruise in foreign land, is you still don't want to be standing there when the boat's headed out into the water and the last horn is being blown. Now, if you're with my wife, the guy over there on that side of the shore, that little foreign fellow says, when do you want to leave? My wife says, on the last bus out. Of course she does. <laughs> We're late everywhere. <laughs> we just don't want to be late getting on that boat. So about that third blow, that horn, about this, and I said, yes, it's about time to start packing up. That thing don't go blow seven times. It blows that seven times. We're out of here. Here's what they say. They say we'll blow seven times, and then right before it goes, there'll be a chime of five horns. That's grace. Y'all got to get there before they leave. Amen. All right, here's what I'm going to tell you tonight. Notice this. I'm talking about a trumpet. Now, the Bible said that trumpet blows at a tension. Assembly has been called. The camp of Israel is getting ready to move. I can say after that ringing of that heart, not your God, ring the heart. That means there's a brokenness, there's a desire, there's a change being made. Here's what the prophet, the Lord gives the prophet Joel this to say. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify fast, call a solemn assembly. You know what he's saying? He said, blow the whole victory has been given. The curse is gone. The Lord has removed his hand of anger. The curse is gone. Watch what's about it. Go with me. And verse number 23, notice what it says. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause it, and he will cause it. Uh, to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Anybody see anything happening here tonight? You know what the Lord's saying? He said that rain was supposed to come in the beginning, and that rain was supposed to come in the latter. It's all going to come in the first month, but it ain't coming to flood. It ain't coming to wash it out. It's coming to multiply. It's coming to give to you a fact that you never imagined simply because you hurt them and you repeat it. And the voice of God. Now there's a horn being blown. What that means is we're not scattered to the problem. We're all being called in the assembly. Hey, wait a minute. Get in here real close. Here's what he's saying. God is about to do something. Everything you thought you lost, God's about to multiply. Everything you thought wasn't going to grow. Hey, God's about to put here to grow down in. But you ain't never seen before. Amen. He said, you got to get in here real close. you got to hear me. Wait a minute. Look at verse number 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, my great army which I see among you. Anybody see what it says? And I will 
said, if you look behind this, a desolate land. It's empty and there's nothing there. But the Lord said, because I've heard the plea, because there's been a ringing of the heart and all the garments, because somebody got serious with God, he said, not only will I cause it to multiply, not only will I cause it to grow, but I will restore that that was lost. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of those ten lepers that only one went back to give thanks. You want the Bible said to him, not only are you cleansed, but be thou made whole. You know what I believe that means with all my heart? That whatever it was that that old disease I, of leprosy had taken from him, I, I believe God gave it back. I believe God restored it. And my friend, how many times has Satan said, I, oh, you can't do that. And listen, you can't quit that job. I, and listen, you, you, you can't take on that over there. I, and there ain't no way y'all go to church every night during the week I, I, for four or five weeks under a tent. I, and listen, there ain't no way I, you can go down there and clean the church. There's no way you can show up every Sunday morning, every Sunday and I, every week say, hey, listen, I, you can't raise a family with just one man working. Mama stay at home raising the young. That's just not the way you do it in America. I, and listen, you've got to go buy a house that you can't pay for. You've got to go finance a car you ain't got no business paying for. That's the way you do it in America. I, oh, man, I'm glad there's some people that look like and say, hey, wait a minute. Satan's already stole all from me. He's going to get it. Yeah, man, he's already took all he's going to take. Drugs and alcohol's already claimed all they're going to claim. I'm going to rend my heart. I, turn it on to God. And thank God you're sitting here tonight. And God is restored. I, and God is planted. I, and God's allowed you to reap I, fruit that you did not plant. I, you got things in the barn I, that you didn't even harvest. I, and it's all because I, God's been good to you. Amen. 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 Let me show you something. I'm done right here. Somebody, anybody, come to the end. I'm going to kill myself right here trying to finish this. <laughs> Watch what your Bible said right here. Go with me if you will. To the book of Revelation. Come on, faith. Go with me to the book of Revelation. I want to read something to you tonight. <laughs> Revelation chapter number four. Notice what your Bible says. Right here, turn to Revelation chapter four. I'm going to read uh, over here in Job to you one more time. Here's what the Bible said. Verse number 14, the Bible said, Who knoweth if he would return and repent? And leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. And the Bible said, Blow the trumpet inside. Sanctify fast. Call a solemn assembly. You know what that is tonight? If you'll study that out, what's happened here to the children of Israel is that judgment has fell upon the children. You and I know that there's coming a great day of judgment. Matter of fact, what we read here in the book of Joel is in no comparison to the judgment that God will pour out upon this earth. It's not even in comparison. The good news I have for you is this. It's going to be at least five and seven years. Because there's a thousand year momentum right. And there's a seven year tribulation. Thank God you and I won't have been here in the tribulation. Amen. I want to show you something I believe will help me. You'll watch the word of God tonight. Just play something real soft right there, play. Here's what John said in Revelation. Chapter number four, verse number one. He said, now to this, behold, the door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was him for a trumpet talking with me. Which said, come up here. I'll show you which must be here after. You look at it and say, that's a final sound. That's the final call. That is the trump of God. You want to look at this Lord, he tells us tonight that with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and things we call it together, we in the clouds. And so shall we ever be alone. You know what it means tonight for you and I to rid their heart of our garment? It means to stay on the battlefield tonight. There's coming a day. There is coming a day. Church, I can't help but tell you, there's coming a day. Thank God the last trumpet's going to sound. And you know what it is tonight? It is the final assembly of the bride of Christ. Let me give you this. I'm done. That horn was blown for one. It was the enemy coming. That horn was blown for a sin. That horn was blown for attack. My friend, when the battle was over, that horn was blown for victory. You know what this is in the book of Revelation tonight? It's victory. There ain't anything tonight you get that's cost you anything tonight that God has not multiplied. Good place. 
I'm glad they were strong tonight, aren't you? I'm glad the world's strong tonight. I'm glad the Lord is right. And His Word is right. Here's what He said. He said, there's coming a day, Joel says, look, hey, that trumpet sound, that trumpet sound, that's an assembly. It's time to move. It's time to move. God's going to do something. It's time to move. Because you repent. You read God. Can I say this? That veil was ripped from top to bottom. You and I have access to the throne room of God. Praise don't have to win his garments for us tonight. That veil is ripped. Mind and me and you tonight must rend our hearts. Not our garments, Lord, our heart ought to be broken. We'll have a desire to live for him to serve him. Why? Because there's no other day. John said, I heard, I heard that voice. It was as a trumpet say, come up here. You realize after Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 1, you and I are not in that tribulation period to read about it. We've been called into the presence of the Lord. I want to say tonight, that trumpet is for victory. Boy, aren't you glad you got victory in the Lord Jesus Christ? He's standing all across the house. He's without eyes and clothes. I know this altar is full of people this morning. Oh, we have broken hearts. We desire the weeping. We desire the repeating this morning. We desire the nursing hand of God. I have no idea, but I'd like to close the service out like this, but I have no idea what you need. I want to have this gathered around this altar tonight. I'm calling the whole church together around this altar tonight. Just say, it's me and my family. I just want to surrender to the Lord.